pandemic can't let your guard down just yet. Carmen, thanks. Well, again, coronavirus cases are up 89% in Arizona following Memorial Day with an alarming number in Yuma County. Health officials are now considering possible state closures again as data predicts a sharp increase of infections before we hit a plateau. So tonight in a News 11 exclusive, our Aziza Schuler takes us inside the COVID-19 wing at Yuma Regional Medical Center to see how they are caring for patients as we break through the peak. Yuma County, separated from California by just the Colorado River and right up against the U.S.-Mexico border, two places where COVID-19 cases are rapidly growing. Though Yuma is nestled on the desert's horizon, the heat isn't slowing the virus. It took nearly two months for the virus to reach a thousand cases in Yuma County, but within the first week of June, that number doubled to more than 2,000. For a population of more than 200,000, there's only one privately owned hospital in the entire county, and it's treating its fair share of patients. Beginning, uh, it was just minimal admissions. Right now, we're seeing a high rate. We are seeing the increase in the COVID um, patients. We have um, approximately, I believe, 80 some odd patients in the house. So we're seeing that people are being tested and we're seeing the results of it. County health officials believe this is the peak. When Arizona's stay-at-home order expired on May 15th, some debated it was too soon to reopen. Now, Yuma County's infections have spiked. By June 6th, the state's health director alerted Arizona hospitals to prepare for crisis care. So we have a second unit that we opened up um, earlier this week that can expand up to 50 patients if necessary. Yuma Regional Medical Center has refuted claims of being at capacity. However, on this particular day would only allow our cameras limited access to the COVID-19 isolation unit, saying all rooms were filled with COVID-19 patients. Nearly a half a million nurses globally have been infected by the coronavirus, yet nurses place their lives on the line each day, entering into this COVID-19 unit. We know pretty much everybody in this unit is positive of COVID. Judy Romero has worked this unit for six weeks. I just love nursing. It's, it's my passion. This is um, something nobody, I think, was ever prepared for. We went in not knowing what this was going to be like. Uh, we started off slow with about 10 beds, 10 patients, and we've just increased in pretty rapidly. To meet the influx of patients, the hospital deployed its second string of nurses from a list of staff on standby in case of a surge. Nurses like Romero can be treating five to six COVID-19 patients at a time. What's been the most amount of patients you've had in the unit at a time? Uh, here in this unit, we've had up to 42 patients. Is that overwhelming? It can be, depending on how many, how sick they are. How has treating COVID-19 patients differed from any other virus or disease you've encountered? They can decline quick. Their respiration, their breathing, that can go a lot quicker than any other illness that I see very fast from one minute to another. What are some of those telling factors that a patient's condition is declining or improving? Uh, their breathing, usually. Treatments vary from patient to patient. Some are stabilized by simply treating non-severe symptoms. But Romero says the most critical patients require a higher concentration of oxygen while on a ventilator. It's, it's tough. There are days that you are mentally, physically exhausted when you leave the floor, um, especially when you see a patient that they're very stable one day and a couple minutes later they're you know struggling to breathe. Fear, sadness, you get attached to a lot of, you know, the patients, especially if you work here your three, four days in a row. They tell you, they hold your hand and they say, oh my gosh, I feel horrible. Am I gonna die? That's mainly the, the main questions that they have. Am I gonna make it through this today? And you just gotta be there and comfort and, you know, telling them it's gonna be okay even if you don't know if it's gonna be okay. Hospital 
data shows from March 1st to June 8th, out of more than 300 patients admitted into the COVID unit at YRMC, close to 10% died in the hospital. In that same time frame, over 60% of patients have recovered. That's like the happiest moment there is when you're telling them, guess what, you're going home today, you're going to go see your family. One of the recovered 57-year-old Eddie Hernandez back in his wife's arms after five breathless weeks in the ICU battling COVID-19. Irreplaceable moments spent tethered to a ventilator. I really can't remember a lot of it. I'm glad to be alive though. <laughs> Edna also tested positive, but her symptoms were less severe. She's calling her husband's recovery a miracle. He was so close to death, and I was in quarantine, and the doctor called me and told me that uh, they didn't think that he would make it through the night and that they were going to go hour by hour. I just never quit praying, and uh, it just wasn't his time because he's here. Still regaining his strength, Eddie is being discharged from the hospital to a rehab facility in Mesa, Arizona. Just never lose, lose hope or faith, not until that last breath is gone, because there's always hope as long as there's breath. Reporting in Yuma, Aziza Schuler. Really, really powerful stuff, Aziza. Thank you.